Hello there and welcome to the second video looking at the employer set project task 4a of our digital T level. In this video we're going to try to keep it as short as possible and break these videos down into parts so you can see as we implement the solution um, to the task or the set task project that's been provided. So our set task information is there. It says the existing code provided allows the user to input the amount in one currency and convert it to another currency based on the most up-to-date figures provided. And the solution must also identify trends and patterns over time for the value of the pound to US dollars and the US dollars to pounds as well. And the solution must be secure. So what we do is we work our way through this bit by bit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this space here in the menu to allow me to add in another uh, menu option. So I'm going to add in option 7 and that's going to be trends and patterns over time. So trends and patterns, I can't spell, patterns over time. Okay, now that's option seven. So it says here, menu choice, enter your number of your choice. Well, it's one to seven now. And it says try, int menu choice, uh, except, so sorry, you didn't enter your valid choice. So this is validation and it says if the integer menu choice is less than one or it is greater than it's seven now because we've added something in there and it returns the menu choice. So it goes down to menu choice here. And this is the first thing that gets ran in my program, which is absolutely fine. But what I need to do now is I need to start building um, my trends menu. So I'm going to have a secondary menu. So def trends menu, bracket, bracket. And I'm just going to butcher the code that's been provided above. So this is a perfectly good menu. I'm going to take all the code from inside there and I'm going to tweak it to match what we need. So trends menu, I've got a flag in there and it will continue to ask this question. Now I don't need all of these. Um, what things will we need from the set task information? So I'll say which trend so this pattern would you like today? And option one. That's going to look at the trend over time for the value of the, let's say, pound. Okay, pound to dollar, and there we are. So the second one, that's going to be my trend from the beginning date in my CSV file to the end date in my CSV file. And this one is not going to be pounds sterling. It's going to be US dollars to pounds. So I'll swap these around. There we go. So we've got the flip now, the other side of that. Um, and then what might be nice is if I display these, probably on a graph, I suppose, I will maybe these are separate. Maybe I'll combine them. Try and show you a combined graph or something like that so you can see. Um, and then, to be specific, over a set period of time, I'm going to say value trends between two dates. And that's for pounds sterling to US dollar. So I'll copy that up there just to save me typing all this out. So for pounds dollar and sterling's in there. And I'll take US dollar to pound sterling. Now, I am moving pretty quickly through this. I'm trying to keep the time of these videos down. So let's have five options. We can always expand it, and we need to make sure that everything matches in here. So this is it's called trend choice now. Let's call it trend choice. Please enter the number of your choice. I have got one, two, five options. Integer, not menu choice anymore. It's trend choice in there. Sorry, you didn't enter valid choice. Then I'll put int. Trend choice. You can do a find and replace if you wanted to. Make, make life easier for you. It's not 1 to 7 anymore. It's 1 to 5. And sorry, yes, return. Don't return menu choice though. Return trend choice. Now, what don't make sense to me. If we try the integer, else integer, why would we not return the integer? 
cast it, but they've not returned it as one. So let's do that in there. So then menu choice gets put in there. I choose menu seven. Then I want the menu, I want the menu choice. If it's seven, I'd like it to return. I'd like it to return or run some different options for me. So let's say if the user entered, I think, I think it was an in, did it come back as a string again? We'll check that in a minute. If the menu choice is greater than or equal to one and the menu choice that the user types in is less than seven, so seven or more less, then you're going to continue. Okay, so if you continue with the currency. So if it's greater than one or less than seven, greater than or equal to one or less than seven, carry on with your currency as before. That's what the previous developer has created. I'm going to adapt this to say now, okay, well, if it's not, um, if it's seven, elif integer, the menu choice, if that's exactly seven in the first menu, then I want you to run the trends menu, please. Type that in, trends menu, and that's called Trend choice. Did I call it trends choice? No, I called it trends menu. Trends menu. And the return, it's going to return. To, okay, it's going to return trend choice. Put that in there. Right. I'm going to show you what this does now, this tweak. Now, I've amended the code that's already there. Line 79 is the first line that gets ran. So if I run the program for you to see, it's going to say menu choice, menu. So it jumps up to the menu and it runs all these options to my screen and it asks me a choice. The new menu option I put in there, it says trends and patterns over time. I press number seven for that new menu option and then it goes back into my code. It tries it, it says seven is an integer and it is between the bounds, so it returns menu choice. So now menu has returned seven. There you go, you can see seven in there. Then it says if the integer value of seven, so it converts it from a string or a character into um, an integer. It says if it's greater than or equal to one and seven is less than seven. It's not less than, it's equal to, so it should fail that as well, which it did, it failed, good. Elif uh, integer menu choice, so is seven equal to seven? Yes, it is. So I'll run the choice, the, the trend menu. So it goes up, runs the trend menu, shows me the five options and asks me to input one. There you go. Uh, well, if I put in one, there you go, goes in, checks to see if it's an integer. It is, is it in the bounds of one to five? One, yeah, it is. So it returns trend choice. And now it's just gonna carry on, which I don't want it to do. So I've returned one there, okay. So far, so good, I've just expanded the menu, okay? Now we need to start focusing on doing something with this. So if the user enters that their trend choice is one, equal, equal one, then we're going to print option one selected. If you didn't, elif trend choice equals equals, oh, equals equals two. And it's gonna say print option two, or option two selected. There we go, right, so five options in total. So guess what, I'm gonna need this a few more times. That's not good. That's very annoying when it does that. How many is that? So that's three, four, five. So each one of those is dependent upon the option that the, that the user selects. So now I can direct them and give them custom options based on what they've put. So again, I'll test this nice and quickly just so you can see exactly what's going on. Trends and patterns over time is option seven. 
then I want, let's say, number three. Oh. Uh-oh. So what's happened here is you can see that it says option three has been selected. So it did run this else if statement, but it carried on down here. Now that's an issue. And basically, if you've asked for, asked for the trend menu, you will run the trends, produce the patterns and trends over time. And then I want to I want the system to close, really. I don't want it to carry on with the rest of the conversion system. So I need to close the system. So to do that, um, I'm going to need to use the system functions. So I will import SYS. So system functions back down to my code and I'll say sys.exit. Now exit requires a parameter, either zero or a one. Uh, if you leave it blank, that's the same as zero really, it just means true, so can you exit? That should work. Now let's test this out. If this works, it shouldn't allow you to continue with the system for conversion. So seven is trends and patterns. I put in number three again, and there you go system closes and it stopped so that's good